This is the big question. Is Morazond the antagonist of Dragonflight? That's obviously yet to be seen, but is Morazond going to be in the expansion? The answer is nearly definitely. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, well, how about a massive hint dropped in the recent Dragonflight launch date trailer? Check this out. You balance upon the cusp of destiny. All that matters is this moment. And now have a listen to this. The cycle will repeat. So it goes. What matters is that Azeroth did not fall. That we survive to fight another day. All that matters is this moment. So that's Nosdormu saying the same thing. All that matters is this moment. He said that when we defeated Marzon, which is his time-twisted future self in the End Time dungeon. Even the official thumbnail of the video was Nosdormu. <laughs> so now we've got what I would consider a wink wink nudge nudge that Marzond will make an appearance in this expansion. That's kind of huge, but it also goes a long way to confirming some of our biggest Dragonflight speculation. That in fact, you're about to witness today's sponsor. A new WoW expansion is about to come out and I have a plan, right? We're going to be a beast, we're going to reclaim time and have more fun. Ali Abdal's Productivity Masterclass is going to help us achieve this goal. And you can now take it for free by using the link in the description box. And you'll also receive unlimited access to tens of thousands of additional classes for a whole month on Skillshare. Skillshare are awesome. Now, uh, you know, life can be a bit... Rush, rush, canter, and that really sucks. And I find that having a great productivity system means that I am less stressed. It means I'm rushing less. It means I can reclaim time to actually enjoy things, like World of Warcraft. Ali's content is fantastic, and here he will teach you the skills, the knowledge, and impart the wisdom that he's gained over his journey to help you come up with a productivity system that works for you. It will help you declutter your life, get much needed clarity on things so that you can just get your work done and live life. With those principles, I've recently changed a little bit of how I manage myself. And that's something that's very important because you know what? I've done WoW expansion launches where I'm snowed in with work and it's really annoying. Now that I can see this Dragonflight release date coming in, you know, in close as it is, I'm actually feeling myself getting on top of my work. It's great. This is an excellent series. It's one of the most loved on Skillshare for good reason. It is absolutely worth your time. So get it now for free at the link below, and you'll also receive unlimited access to tens of thousands of additional classes for a whole month. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. They are the online learning community for creators, and they've got a bunch of great stuff. So hit up that link. Let's go. The story threads are starting to weave together, but there's a lot that we still don't know. I mean, most of it, to be honest, because the expansion hasn't came out yet. Blizzard, though, have been battening down the hatches, and they've kept the biggest story beats quite well hidden. But they do love throwing hints, like that hint in the Dragonflight date announcement trailer. So now that we're fairly confident that Marzond is one of those hidden story beats, it shows us what the rest may look like. Now, we've been working on a very big theory. And if you want all of the quotes and it to feel quite cinematic and all, check out our recent video on the end of the Warcraft setting or the hour-long deep dive that we did on our podcast over on Patreon. For today, I'll keep it to the spark notes. After that, we'll hammer out why Marzond is so important to this theory. So, the theory goes the Blizzard have in fact been building their next big bad guy since Cataclysm technically, but more specifically Legion. You see, in Legion, these Doomsayer NPCs appeared, and they claimed that death at Sargaris' hand was in fact preferable to what was going to come next anyway. Nazoth also warned us of what was to come. He considered us tools in Void's struggle against whatever the thing that is to come is. The Jailer then told us that a cosmos divided will not stand. That means that whatever is coming is as big and scary as our whole cosmos. The Titans, Legion, Void Lords, Light, everyone on one big team. That is apparently our only hope to stop it. And this is where Morazon fits in. So, 
Think back to the End Time dungeon, right? Morazond called it the End Time, and he wanted that outcome, right? That total domination where, you know, Void is like taking over Azeroth, Deathwing is like dead on top of Wormrath's Temple, all that like gnarly stuff. And he wants that because he actually saw something else at the very end of time that was so dark and bad that the end time that we see in the dungeon in his eyes is preferable. And his final words, of course, were, Amunthul, what have I seen? The end time that we ventured to was preferable to whatever he saw. And then I have to wonder if Amunthul gave him like that vision, uh, what did Amunthul know? Therefore, I don't think it's at all a leap of logic to say that Morazond almost certainly saw the same thing that Nazoth and the Jailer were also a bit worried about. He saw what is to come, or at the very least, the aftermath. And to put a fine point on this, one of the Doomsayer prophecies proclaimed that, in time, even the shadow will howl for the light it once despised. So, whatever's coming will make the old gods cry out for the Naru. That's how bad it is, and Morazond is the guy who knows what this threat is. Now, the thing is, if we remove this from Zoval and the Shadowlands story, I think we could all say that this is a pretty cool, potentially quite exciting thing that Blizzard have been building up literally since 2011. All right, a Titan-sized mystery, but Blizzard's problem is that they expanded that lore whilst shoehorning in the least interesting villain they've ever had, meaning that they did kind of tarnish a lot of their future potential because this threat as established in Cataclysm and Legion does have the hallmarks of something that could be great. The challenge therefore is for Blizzard to essentially rehabilitate this large threat by, rather than framing it in terms of Zoval, go right back to the Cataclysm and frame it in terms of what they set up with the character of Morazond. This is where things get interesting then. If we're gonna be talking about getting the Cosmos into one big raid group, then Blizzard have got a lot of options for Morazon's return. There's an obvious thing and then the less obvious. So first off, he's an agent of whatever is to come, right? That's straightforward. There's honestly not much else to say. Morazon is the herald of some weird cosmic evil. He's a raid tier in this expansion, either because he serves an enemy or he is just so hardcore and wanting to stop that enemy that he wants to do some megalomaniacal shit, right? Now, the big question is, will Morazon be just another raid boss who will then be defeated and say, no, oh, what about my plan to stop the real villain? Surely they won't do that for the Jailer, right? Besides, it's been like six years of overt buildup since the Doomslayers and Legion, we need something concrete. I think that a genuine, this changes everything moment, like 6.2's Argus reveal and 6.3's finale is what is needed. So let's try to have some fun with this. We all know Morazon could easily just be the final raid tier, but what if he was not the bad guy? Dragonflight has many potential villains, right? We've got the three primal incarnates that we're yet to see beyond Razageth, we've got Galakrond, we've got Chromatis, or some sort of new threat. Morazond does not need to be a raid boss. So what if Morazond was instead our key to understanding the new threat? This is something that is not unreasonable. There is actually a way to make him a fairly interesting villain. I don't know, someone could maybe say it in an Emmett Selk manner. You get my drift. The idea that he's not just some mad, mind-dominated agent of Void. Because as we've established, he literally did think that Void's victory was preferable to whatever dark, gnarly shit that he saw. He didn't say the Void ending was good, he just said it was better than the worst ending. And he wasn't corrupted and turned into some mad abomination of himself, like Neltharion was when he was you know, turned into Deathwing. It's far more that the old gods kind of tricked him into trying to subvert his own death, thus breaking the timelines. It's weird. I mean, Morazond exists outside of time, outside of the cosmos. All this pretty heady stuff. Another thing is that depending on Blizzard's philosophy on how time works, we already know when Morazond dies, right? They could break that and just say, time travel, it's another timeline, but if it is the case that his true death is in the end time dungeon, then we already know he survives Dragonflight. Now, if his change is gradual, then I think we could actually see quite a fascinating, tragic character. One that is bound to fate, a slave 
to what Amunthul wrought upon him by giving him that vision. So if the end time dungeon that we saw in Cataclysm is showing us the end state of Morazond, what is he like when he is first about to turn? Is he that instantly that far gone? Or is he more just a bit of a maverick? If Morazond believed that the end time was preferable to what he saw, then that does show a degree of actual thought. So he might actually be one of those more grey characters who forgoes their old allegiances acting of their own accord. Like, say, an Illidan. So, Morazond is absolutely traditionally a bad guy, but really, as soon as he turns up, we need to start asking him questions about what he saw. Because our characters canonically defeated him in the far future because of that dungeon, so we know that he knows stuff. And then I could talk about timelines for another 15 minutes because, yeah, uh, how deep does a rabbit hole go? Basically, however deep Blizzard wanted to go because of how time things work. But after all, our characters did canonically hear Zoval speak of what is to come, so it would be fairly shoddy writing if nobody decided to ask anyone a follow-up question. Alright, this is wild, but the idea of Morazon not being evil could already have seeds in the beta, so spoiler time. Okay, this section does have spoilers, but they're only brief and from a side quest. So, in Thaldrassus, we are asked by the Bronze Flight to investigate one of their shrines. Outside, a tablet tells us Nosdormu was empowered by Amunthul to protect the timeline. So they're obviously making sure that connection between Titan and Dragon is in the head of the player. Now, Amunthul showed him many secrets, his own death, the end of everything, and Nosdormu believes everything has to go exactly the way it was laid out to him by Amunthul. Now inside the shrine is the Echo of Duty, which is this physical manifestation of Nosdormu's oath to protect what is, what has been, and what must always be. He put one in every timeline so that he would always remember his oath. Even after he becomes Marzond, right? So are they foreshadowing Marzond? clasping this golden ball and having an inflection moment thinking about duty? Is this our avenue to Morazond not being fully a bad guy? It certainly could be. The idea of him feeling doomed to fate, but striving against his destiny to do like, you know, what maybe what he thinks is right because he thinks his destiny is actually serving a pretty bad end, that actually could be a neat villain. What's also significant is that when this happens, Nosdormu becomes sullen, grasping the sphere and turning away. He's used his own logic to convince himself that he will become Morazond, and it feels like he thinks that's going to happen soon. Now, at the end of patch 9.2, Fering worries that perhaps Soval was actually accounted for in the First One's design. Much like how in Tolkien's Legendarium, Melkor's treachery was seemingly accounted for by Eru Iluvatar, the one true god of that setting. Now, the Titans are almost successors to the first ones, I mean, even in terms of their artistic style. So, if Avanthil had access to the timelines, then he knew Nosdormer would turn. So, surely, because he empowered Nosdormer knowing what would happen, this is all accounted for. That's a bit spooky. And if all that wasn't enough, Marzon wasn't the only hint in the trailer. We've only talked about Nosdormu's lines. There is more, and I think they speak to even wider speculations that we've had about exactly what is coming. Rathian's voiceover says that events are unfolding that will imperil us all. Now, Rathian, of course, is always thinking two steps ahead. We've literally seen this through all of his history as a character. So, could he mean this very literally, as in everyone, a cosmos united? Then we've got Abyssian telling us uh, the threat is greater than we know. It's also key that it's Black Dragons telling us this. They are the warders of the Earth. They are arguably closest to the goal of protecting the core of the world. And I think this story of what is to come, and then the story of Azeroth, I think that those things are linked. Through the dragon's connection to Azeroth, we're going to come to understand this. And that's also deeply linked to their purpose. P 
per the Titans, which is what the Primal Incarnates, the immediate threat here, are rebelling against, right? That Titan purpose. They clearly have a different view. Now, Chronicle told us the dragons themselves are descended from elementals, and we now believe that Azeroth created and named the elements. They're going from Guardians of Azeroth to Children of Azeroth. This is a transformation that feels rather well established in the canon. And the dragons themselves, they've already been questioning giving up their power. They've had a lot of these thoughts about what their identity and how they move forward, like how that actually shakes out. That's been a core part of Cataclysm and the story of 8.2. Now, in uh, Dawn of the Aspects, Caelagos had visions of the Aspects' war against Galakrond and why they were empowered by Tyr. And then he realized something. Tyr did not empower them because they defeated Galakrond, but because he saw something fundamental about the dragons. Caligos realized that the destiny of the flights wasn't just to subvert the Hour of Twilight and to defeat Deathwing, it was actually something that went more to the core of their relationship with Azeroth. Now, we've seen Azerite come out of our planet. We went to Zareth Morris, and what did we find? Oh, basically the same stuff is uh, powering these engines of creation. Now we're seeing the Aspects reclaim their positions as guardians of, I mean, Azeroth, which very much is that power that even is key in Zareth Mortis. The next step then is this whole what is to come story, and that is also going to be the next step in Azeroth's story. That shadow will build over Azeroth, it has, I suppose, built up somewhere outside of the cosmos. We don't literally know yet. But the new big question is, will Morazond be its herald? Or will Morazond be our big step in defeating it? Will he be a straight up bad guy? Or will he almost serve a more Illidan-like role in our story? It'll be pretty damn interesting to find out. That's it for me then. Let me know how you think this is going to go in the new expansion. And I'll see you next time.